Section thirty four of the American Book of the Dog. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The American Book of the Dog. G. O. Shields, Editor. Section thirty four. The Collie by henry jarrett and j e doherty the origin of the collie like that of most other breeds of dogs is unknown many different theories have been advanced by various writers on the subject most of them however being without any foundation the theory offered by hugh dalziel in his excellent work on the collie is that the breed is a result of selection carried on through a long series of years and this is no doubt as near the truth as we may ever expect to get the name collie is supposed to have been derived from the same root as collar and to refer to the white collar or band around the dog's neck the collie is probably the most useful of all our non-sporting dogs Many authentic instances are recorded showing the almost human intelligence of these dogs in the execution of their duties in driving and herding sheep and cattle. In fact, it is well nigh impossible to overestimate the intelligence of a well-trained collie. Besides being indispensable to the farmer, they make most excellent watchdogs and companions, and may also be trained for retrieving game both on land and from the water although much has been done in this country to encourage the breeding of show dogs the working qualities of this breed have been sadly neglected and it is to be regretted that sheep dog trials have never been encouraged here there are plenty of well-trained dogs in the united states and if trials were once established they would soon become popular there are numerous trials held in england every year for sheep dogs which are invariably successful and which act as reminders to breeders that collies are sheep dogs the importation of so many first-class specimens by the chestnut hill kennels of philadelphia has been a great assistance to american breeders and has done much toward raising the breed to its present popularity i know of no breed that has advanced so rapidly in public favor in america as has the collie i am often asked why nothing has yet been bred in america to equal the best of the imported dogs the reason is that there are very few really first-class brood bitches in this country we have some of the best stud dogs in the world and what we need now are a large number of good brood bitches many people seem to attach no importance to the quality or breeding of the bitch so long as they have a good dog to breed to in england you will find at least a hundred first-class bitches to one in this country and this means so many more thoroughly good puppies there is generally one extra good one in each well-bred litter and that one frequently dies before reaching maturity this being the case it will easily be understood that america cannot compete successfully with england in breeding collies until the number of our brood bitches is largely increased by importation the fault to be found with most american bred collies is the want of character and collie expression the best collie ever bred in this country was probably glenlinat by strepfen out of mavis he was bred by mr a r kyle of sound beach connecticut and was a very fine specimen of the breed he won first prize at winstead in eighteen eighty six and gave considerable promise of making a great name for himself but was unfortunately killed on the railroad by a passing locomotive while he was at exercise mavis is one of our few good brood bitches she is now owned by mr james watson of philadelphia who is one of our best collie judges unfortunately good collie judges are like good collie brood bitches rather scarce the most difficult point to produce is a good coat and in spite of all that has been written to the contrary there is no danger at present of our breeding collies with coats so heavy as to interfere with their movements while working a great many writers seem to think that the collie when working has always to contend with a blizzard or a mud pond and that if his coat is long the snow or mud will cling to him in such quantities as to soon tire him out this however is the exception rather than the rule and the texture of the coat is of much more importance than its length the most important point is the undercoat 
although color is immaterial the sable with white points is at present the most fashionable in the early days of shows black and tan was considered the best color and to improve the color of the tan markings it is said that the gordon setter blood was introduced which would account for the large saddle flap ears and soft open coat frequently found in dogs of this color it is probable that we shall soon have a strain of pure white collies several having recently been bred in england and the chestnut hill kennels have two white puppies by matchly wonder these white collies are pretty but do not look like workers and for this reason will probably never become popular the dog selected for illustration is champion scotilla owned by the chestnut hill kennels philadelphia here pictured he was whelped october twenty eighth eighteen eighty five and is by dublin scott flurry the second he was imported in eighteen eighty seven and has won over forty champion prizes he is the sire of a large number of first prize winners and is considered the best collie in the country h j the rough-coated collie is one of the oldest breeds of dogs in existence he is a true sheep dog from which no doubt all other shepherd dogs derive their origin beauty intelligence and usefulness are all to be counted in the highest degree to his credit the marvellous stories told of his sagacity and cunning are almost incredible and yet it does not seem so strange when we take into consideration that he has been in training and in constant companion of the shepherd for hundreds of years no other dog is so constantly with his master in his proper calling this naturally increases the intelligence of each individual and reacts on the whole breed so that independent of the constant weeding out of puppies which were useless from lack of intelligence the superiority of the whole variety in mental attributes is easily accounted for there is no authentic history as to the origin of the collie he is supposed by some authors to have been bred from a wild dog or dingo whose form he strongly resembles this theory is a plausible one as his fine muzzle dense coat carriage of tail and ear and his restless habits are not unlike those of the wild dog the wolf and the fox following is the collie standard and scale of points adopted by the english collie club and the collie club of america head and expression value fifteen ears ten neck and shoulders ten legs and feet fifteen hind quarters ten back and loin ten brush five coat with frill twenty size five total one hundred points the skull of the collie should be quite flat and rather broad with fine tapering muzzle of fair length and mouth slightly overshot the eyes widely apart almond shaped and obliquely set in the head the skin of the head is tightly drawn with no folds at the corners of the mouth the ears as small as possible semi-erect when surprised or listening at other times thrown back and buried in the ruff the neck should be long arched and muscular the shoulders also long sloping and fine at the withers the chest to be deep and narrow in front but a fair breadth behind the shoulders the back to be short and level with the loin rather long somewhat arched and powerful brush long with upward swirl at the end and normally carried low the forelegs should be perfectly straight with a fair amount of flat bone the pasterns rather long springy and slightly lighter of bone than the rest of the leg the foot with toes well arched and compact soles very thick the hind quarters drooping slightly should be very long from the hip bones to the hocks which should be neither turned inward nor outward with stifles well bent the hip bones should be wide and rather ragged the coat except on legs and head should be as abundant as possible the outer coat straight hard and rather stiff the undercoat furry and so dense that it would be difficult to find the skin the ruff and frill especially should be very full there should be but little feather on the forelegs and none below the hocks on the hind legs color immaterial symmetry 
the dog should be of fair length on the leg and his movements wiry and graceful he should not be too small height of dogs from twenty two to twenty four inches of bitches from twenty to twenty two inches the greyhound type is objectionable as it gives little brain room in the skull and with this there is to be found a fatuous expression and a long powerful jaw the setter type is also to be avoided with its pendulous ears and straight short flag the smooth collie only differs from the rough in the coat which should be hard dense and quite smooth point judging is not advocated but figures are only made use of to show the comparative value attached to the different properties no marks are given for general symmetry which is of course in judging a point of the utmost importance color immaterial as placed in the standard although virtually correct is somewhat misleading in these days of scientific breeding nothing seems impossible and by careful selection as to color almost any color may be produced after a careful study of the subject and several years of breeding the writer has formed the opinion that the following colors are essential and cannot be looked upon with any suspicion of a cross black white and tan sable sable and white red foxy colors and in fact all the shades of tan and colors formed by the mingling of the above colors it is a well-known fact that nearly or quite all the greatest prize winners and most typical specimens of the breed are of these colors the collie is affectionate and obedient is extremely sensitive and will seldom bear punishment without becoming sulky when once you gain his confidence he will obey your commands at all times without restraint or compulsion a large percent of collies are gun-shy and afraid of thunder there is a peculiar crafty and cunning look about the collie possessed by no other species of the canine race he is a faithful companion and a watchful guardian of his master's property he is the ideal farm dog and has no equal in that capacity except for the collie much of the highlands of scotland and england would be absolutely worthless the sheep graze where a man cannot follow to advantage a trained collie will take out a flock of sheep in the morning remain with them during the day and bring them home to the fold at night alone and unaided the collie will work on cattle and hogs as well as on sheep and can be taught to herd all kinds of poultry he makes the capital retriever has a fair nose and with proper training becomes a tolerable hunter he is quick to attack and kill all kinds of vermin the training of the collie for all kinds of farm work is not a difficult matter as soon as the whelp is old enough to leave the nest and follow the dam it will be tagging after her to the field to bring up the stock and in a few short weeks the little fellow will go to the field alone it is then necessary to curb him to teach him to come and to go at your bidding the most effectual plan to get complete control is to attach a light cord of sufficient length to the collar and when the puppy goes too rapidly pull him up sharply and at the same time give the command slow a few repetitions of this will teach him to stop at the word a collie instinctively chases sheep and although not hurting them will run a flock to death he must be taught to drive not chase teach him to go slow by the use of the cord be patient and painstaking in this work and you will surely be rewarded it is necessary to use gestures when giving commands and in a short time the dog will obey the motion of the hand this is advantageous in case of a strong wind or of the noise made by a herd or of the dog being too far away to hear the word of command it should be considered the work of several weeks or months to properly train a puppy but remember that he is likely to live many years and hence it will pay you to lay the foundation of your teachings on solid principles to keep him close in hand till your precepts are deeply grounded and not to discharge him until you are sure that his education is complete and of a lasting character the rearing of the collie does not require any different treatment from that necessary in the case of other canines except in the care of the coat in the summer season he should be washed at least once a week 
when shedding his coat the dead loose hair should be kept well combed out otherwise it may become fleece grown keep the skin clean and the new coat will grow vigorously the dog should have a cool dark place to lie in away from the flies during the day an old piece of carpet or bagging to lie on is sufficient for a bed straw shavings or any kind of litter is a harbor for fleas and hangs to the coat in winter the dog requires less care cold does not seem to affect him in the least and he delights to roll and burrow in the deepest snowbanks thus cleansing and adding lustre to his coat a collie that has been kept as above directed and that has been habitually well fed on wholesome food may be considered at any time after receiving a good combing and brushing as ready for the show bench the collie is constantly growing in favor not only with stockmen and farmers but with lovers of the dog everywhere and we predict for this noble breed a brilliant future in europe he has been transplanted from the hut of the ghillie to the palace and has become to use the words of the well-known english breeder the gentleman's dog the credit is due to england for breeding the collie up to its present high standards but america is not far behind in this matter the collie has a strong hold in the states and numbers among his friends men of wealth and influence who strive to attain the best specimens regardless of price it is not an uncommon thing to-day to see the collie on the plains of the far west following the bands of sheep guarding and protecting them from the hungry coyote and when his qualities are better known every farmer in our country will be the happy possessor of one of these faithful animals here omitted are the names of a few of the collie breeders and exhibitors in america almost a full page boss a k c s b one two six five six is a black and tan collie owned by the writer was whelped august fifteenth eighteen eighty six is a large upstanding dog weighing seventy pounds has abundance of coat the outer coat long and hard has a long lean head good expression ears a trifle large but correctly carried he is a grand specimen and shows a deal of collie character yet like many other good ones he has his faults he lacks finish is a little too straight in the stifle and for the latest craze would be considered a little coarse he was sired by donald the third by long's rob roy out of bessie b by champion coxey out of bell the third damzella a k c s b one one six nine six boss has never been shown outside of his own state has won three firsts in the pet stock shows held in indianapolis and richmond and won the two special premiums eighteen eighty nine and eighteen ninety offered by j van shayak for the best collie bred and owned in indiana j e d this ends section thirty four the collie 